Uh, yes, I'm vegan. You're but vegan? I'm considering being like part-time vegan, going on a holiday on veganism for three months. So the outcome of this conversation could mean uh, if I fail here, it's a lot of pressure basically. <laughs> I don't really know where to draw the line in practical feasibility, like how virtuous do you need to be? And how much should, how much can moral morality demand of us? Oh, like, so if, it was a, if there was like a bit of human flesh on the ground or something like that, you would eat it? Yeah, potentially. Are you saying buying iPhones causes suicides? Yeah, it does, right? Yeah, but I mean- Waste dairy over vegan ice cream, it's not that bad. <laughs> so, look, I, I'm not, this is, this is not a debate that I really care about. So like, did, oh, wait a second, before you leave, did I change your mind on doing a three month uh, eating murdered animals? So we have the table here, why aren't you vegan? Okay. I'm interested in um, uh, debating the ethics of veganism with someone who's not vegan. Are you vegan? Uh, yes, I'm vegan. You're a vegan? But I'm considering being like part-time vegan. Ah, oh, okay. So I'm okay. interested in maybe what the, whether that's a justifiable decision basically. Okay, that's interesting. I've never ever had someone sit down and say that. So the outcome of this conversation could mean uh, if I fail here, it's a lot of pressure basically. <laughs> yeah, you know, I might become kind of like a sort of orthodox Christian where I become a vegan sort of nine months a year and then oh, have like three months of no veganism. Okay, so what do you think veganism is? What is your idea of veganism? I think it's somewhere between like a lifestyle choice and a serious semi-religious moral commitment. Uh, so, but what is this, what is it, the underpinnings of, it, of veganism? What is it based off of what? Do you it's have a moral definition? choice, right? Do you have yeah. A, well, yeah, I mean, a lot of things are moral choices, but what is it fundamentally to you? Um, I guess it's part of my identity, is something I do because I think it's right, along with many other things I do, like not murdering people in the street or like okay. hurting people for no reason or doing bad things. So if I asked you why are you vegan, what would you say? I guess it's sort of mainly an anti-materialistic thing, probably, where I believe that like if you can be a vegan and give up meat, you can give up anything in life, pretty much. Well, well. So by giving up meat, I'm basically free in a way which I wouldn't be if I had to eat meat. So if you, you're kind of doing it as kind of a virtue to let go of meat. Exactly, yeah, it's kind of like virtue ethics would yeah. be maybe the closest moral um, approach, yeah. So you're, sh you're, s you're actually building sort of fortitude in yourself by saying, you know, I can abstain from this. Yes. Therefore yeah. that's going to make you uh, what, a better person in your own eyes or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's the idea, yeah, that's the idea. Okay, so that for me sounds like a sort of an ego-driven reason to avoid meat. Yeah, it's, it's fairly connected to my identity. Okay. Yeah. So veganism is a, a, a movement based on the idea that animals should not be exploited. Yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, obviously that's like the the rational reason I do it, like okay. because I think it's wrong to eat animals and it's wrong to like it's totally unnecessary. There are no reasons in favor of eating meat. It's it's not necessary. Only for a tiny series of exotic cases is it ever necessary to eat meat or dairy. So okay. I don't see there any like positive reason. Um, but like that's not really. That, those kinds of reasons don't actually really change most people's behaviors, so I'm just being honest. Like that's okay. actually what motivates okay. the the deeper core of my commitment. All right. Wow. That, that wow. That was a level that I didn't expect. Yeah. So you went for a deeper level of what changed your motivation. Yeah, that's you. right. Yeah. So what I changed for, your behavior? I went for like the kind of like this is what actually made me and makes me stick to what is a fairly difficult lifestyle choice. Okay. So for me. Uh, and for veganism itself, because we could talk about me, we could talk about the, the doctrine that humans should live without exploiting animals. And by exploiting, I mean uh, violating the rights of animals. And by animals, I mean sentient animals, yeah, just yeah. so we don't get into oysters yeah, or things like, like jellyfish or stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Japan are like quite fringe issues. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you believe that we should uh, live without um, violating the rights of sentient animals? Oh, yes, totally. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And yeah. why would you consider living a lifestyle for three months of the year that violates the rights of sentient animals? I guess the idea is that we live in a society which is so complex. The moral dilemmas that it, it puts upon us are so difficult, both in harm, harming humans and animals, that mm -hmm. to live a virtuous life all the time is basically like psychically impossible. So I wouldn't say like eating meat for three months a year is good. I would never say it's justifiable morally, but perhaps like psychically or like psychologically, humans can only bend so far, they can only take on so much and that it's kind of, um, I don't really know how to rationalize it. Maybe it's like forgivable to eat meat for three months of the year in the same way that maybe, um, I'm trying to think of an analogy, possibly like Christians would rationalize some of the things, some of the sins they break, even though in theory it's absolute sin. Mm. 
So on the other end of uh, this are obviously actual victims. Um, yeah, like the animals themselves. Yeah, yeah, right. of course, being enslaved and decapitated and turned into burgers, and you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't really... Can you find a human case where... We hurt humans for three months a year, or... Well, like, no, we're not just hurt humans. I'm talking well, about... Them. yeah. But yeah, breeding them into existence for the sole purpose of killing them to eat them. Uh, you don't yeah. need to eat them, but just breeding humans into existence to enslave them there. They are basically considered property, so they don't have personhood. They're considered, uh, they would be slaves in this in this hypothetical. I'm basically trying to analogize the, the animal case with humans. Can you find any place where yeah. we do this to human beings? I can beings? think of maybe breeding humans. That's obviously quite extreme. Um, but I could think of maybe like um, some of the choices we make in like modern consumer society, okay. like flying in airplanes, buying certain products that require certain components, which require the deaths of poor people in like other countries, basically. Like, for example, buying like an iPhone, you're mm -hmm. partially complicit in like the terrible working conditions in the factories, which lead to suicides of people. And people might say, look, I'm very moral in most areas of my life. But I also want an iPhone. Uh -huh. I have an iPhone. Yeah. So it's like, I have this microphone as well. Yeah. So I'm, I sort of, I don't really know where to draw the line in practical feasibility. Like how virtuous do you need to be and how much should, how much can moral morality demand of us? Okay. As people. Well, let's go there. So I really do want to have this discussion because uh, you kind of, what you, uh, what I believe you're doing is you're, you might not necessarily be, a, I don't want to misrepresent you either. So just sure. stop me yeah. if I am, but you're saying that these are equatable moral issues. Uh, yeah, or like they're yeah they're sort of other species. Yeah. They're equivocal, like they're equatable. Like so, you're saying uh, buying an iPhone is kind of equatable to eating meat. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, okay. So so basically, it might be wrong. I'm, I'm oh, no, okay, okay, yeah. But so basically, I've got this iPad here. You think that this it's equatable suffering or drain in utility or rights violations in this iPad by by purchasing this iPad as there is in a so a piece of a cow. Uh, probably not. It's probably eating the cow is probably larger right um it's probably because that's only a tiny fraction of the wrong in buying the iphone ipad is to use you're buying this like there are many many ipads it's distributed across all the purchasers so it might be the equivalent say of like um maybe like all the flying of your lifetime could be equivalent to say like eating a couple of burgers potentially what's flying got to do with violating rights of animals or humans um just the massive emissions that it produces uh, how is that a because I guess the tang like eventually the causal chain will lead to people dying, presumably, or animals, right? So do you think fly uh, flying a plane violates human rights um, or animal rights? Well, not legally, but you can make an argument that harms human, the human rights or animal rights at some point. It's just because it's so causally disconnected, we don't think about it in those terms. But actually, yeah, there is a cost, right, of flying. And just like there's a cost of driving, right? Like I've always thought this is baffling. People are like, yeah, we build roads next to high schools and primary schools. Does that violate like the, the rights of those children, no, but actually it means that like five children every 10 years are gonna die. So hmm. I guess it I would say, yeah, flying does violate some rights, but just not obviously, right? They're very, very disconnected. Constantly. Yeah, the environment. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that the environment necessarily violates uh, the kind of negative rights I'm talking about. Sure. So I'm talking about like, uh, you know, the right not to be interfered with, um, oh, sure. enslaved and murdered. Um, you're talking about some type of secondary uh, secondary effect from um, like emissions or something like this. Yeah. I know that can be really catastrophic. Uh, right, yeah. yeah, like from just, climate just change across many individuals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about more direct violation of uh, animal human rights. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, like iPhones, yeah. right? Yeah. What is it about the components of iPhones that is analogous to uh, raising animals and de decapitating them for burgers? Yeah, I suppose the um, maybe we should work out. I think there might be some other di difference that we're having. Do you think the indirectness of buying an iPhone and hurting animals is morally significant compared to like buying and eating a burger, for example? Um, you mean hurting humans? Yeah, hurting like so. For example, like obviously, like stabbing someone and killing them is wrong. Yeah, no one disagrees with that. Buying an iPhone, leading to the suicide of a human necessarily by buying that iPhone by supporting the the process is also wrong. But do you think the causal chain? difference between the two, direct stabbing or the very long series of events in buying the iPhone, do you think they're morally significant, the difference? Are you saying buying iPhones causes suicides? Yeah, it does, right? I mean, not not directly, but like those suicides wouldn't have occurred had it not been for the support of the iPhone buying community, right? Not well, like, well, uh, do you have a, it seems like you're making an empirical claim or it seems yeah, like you're I making... Have, I don't have the evidence for the, the numbers, but obviously like so, there are the documented cases of people killing themselves in iPhone factories. Oh, I don't doubt that people kill themselves. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And they wouldn't have had it not been for the 
the profit driven motives of the that's what i don't agree with i mean yeah. i don't agree that me purchasing sure. the iphone incentivizes suicides or me not purchasing this okay. this iphone is going to stop suicides i don't think there's a causal chain there yeah. through okay. supply and demand but it's very clear to me when i buy a burger sure. that an animal's been decapitated because their body is in that in burger of, yeah now now do you have any like sort of comparative data to suggest that um if iphone factory didn't exist in Ch in china that that, that would uh, drop the suicide rate lower no i mean okay yeah fair yeah this might not be the best example um i was just using it as yeah, you know what i'm saying now. Yeah, i'm not no, trying no, to do a gotcha no, i'm no, just saying that the conditions in china it's, it's uh, the conditions yeah, yeah yeah no no I, I i totally agree with you i think a lot of these kind of moral debates do kind of come down to these empirical questions you can see the difference right let's just yeah. say the workers at the iphone factory are actually being raised and decapitated for burgers uh let's see the difference yeah, I mean, I, I guess, like, can we just maybe imagine a situation not where they're being raised and decapitated, but yeah. simply a situation where the only way you can get an iPhone is, this is hypothetical, the only way you can get an iPhone is if there are, like, people exploited in a way so serious that it kills them. Um, yeah, then I'll boycott the iPhone, but that's a hypothetical that right. I'm talking about reality here. You made the claim that right. okay. buying an iPhone is a, is equivocal to buying a burger, and I, and I sort of try to, like, I'm trying to, like... Right. Right. But you would uh, so you would boycott then if that was the case empirically. Um, yeah, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about is buying an iPhone the same as buying a burger? Oh, no, I don't mean um I I accept Cuz you were that. trying cuz basically what you were trying to what I believe you were trying to do is wrestle with the idea that we purchase products that are almost identical to the moral implications of buying a burger. Oh, yeah? No, I don't think sorry, I wasn't very clear. I don't think buying an iPhone is as bad as eating a burger. I just think that like there is some number Maybe iPhone's not a good example because I'm not sure on the empirics of actually how like. What well, talk about let's talk about slave mining in, in minerals yeah. or something. I don't know. Diamonds? I don't know. How about buying diamonds, right? Like in the diamond mine. Yeah, you won't. No, I mean, let's talk about something that I do buy. <laughs> I don't even buy diamonds. <laughs> yeah. Um, or how about like how about the, the lithium mines, right? Or the, is it lithium? Yeah, the okay. uh, lithium okay, mines. Let's talk sure. about so because basically, as a vegan, I get this a lot. Like you're a hypocrite because you buy. This yeah, product. So why should I boycott that product right, when you exactly. buy this product? Yeah. yeah? So where, how do you decide on boycotting? Okay. Yeah. I would just say, what is the what what is the accusation about the product? Um, oh right. So wait, what product? So whichever one you choose that I buy. So I buy. Um, I've got electronics here. I've got iPhone here. I've got clothing here um, that I wear. So yeah. what what would the accusation be? And I can tell you how I would approach it. Sure. So I mean, I can't come up with any off the top of my head so basically you're considering eating meat again because you, you purchase products that you believe are just as not unvirtuous or what, what was the word you, you basically feel like it, it's the same um it's the same kind of moral issue to buy these products as yeah. is you can't really draw a distinction i'm saying there's a massive distinction sure, right okay. and i want you to point out why you believe there shouldn't be a distinction between buying a phone or buying yeah, this electronics so, and buying a burger yeah so i'm, I'm thinking maybe like the combined effect of consumer product purchases like uh, plastic items, um, like flying in flying, driving around in cars, um, buying like advanced consumer electronics. The combined... You're lumping in different um, industries that have different implications. Right. So you, I don't think you can do that. I want to go, go because these you're talking about massive industries. Like, do you know who works for airlines? Like you got yeah, you know, people, just... lots of people, I'm, I'm, <laughs> like, lots of people work. There's people who work at the Apple store here in Cambridge. Right. I'm saying there's no, there's no reason why I should do any of these things. There's no positive argument in favor. Like I'm not, there's no moral argument for me to do any of, of these things, like going on holiday with long haul flights. Like it's just for my own enjoyment, right? Yeah, but I don't think you're violating human or animal rights by going on that flight. There's obviously there's obviously a threshold to which oh, okay. you're creating some kind of un, like ex extreme right. amount of okay. climate damage to the point that you're like, you know, but uh, so you're uh, saying the the threshold like the well, if you're drawing the threshold, like eating a burger so much higher than well the for damage. the individual animal has like it's like you're comparing um environmental damage to someone being decapitated. Yeah, I mean, I guess like in some ways they are both like they're both wrongs, right? They're not. Oh, is it, is it, well, they're nowhere near compatible. Well, let me just ask you this: like, like what harms you more? Me flying a plane, taking a flight right from now, go to Cambridge to, I don't know, go to Cambridge to Europe, right? Or me decapitating yeah. you and putting you in a burger? Like, which is I more mean, of a moral I, I emergency? This is, this is quite like an old-fashioned way of looking at these moral dilemmas. Like, I think a lot of the biggest criminals in model in modern life commit these kind of highly diffuse crimes, like, like someone who murders. Like, let's say someone murders someone at the pub, right? They chop their head off. That's obviously a crime. It's bad. But are they really comparable to, say, someone who avoids huge quantities of tax? Who's, who's more evil in this situation? Why The murderer. 
The murderer, then the tax evader. To the victim, yeah. Oh, to the victim. But yeah, but who causes more damage, I guess? Who's, who's... Somebody who had taxes or somebody cut someone hit, hit, who's... Yeah. Well, the murderer. Okay, what happens if in the process of, in the process of evading tax, it causes deaths, basically? Like... What kind of deaths? Direct. Murders? Not murders, just like... If it causes more murders, then the person who causes more murders is worse. <laughs> okay, but like, I guess what I'm saying is like, or how about an oil spill, right? Like, someone is partially responsible for causing an oil spill, but it's like a very large bureaucratic structure. They made a choice, it led to like many, many people getting um, affected by the oil, but they're not a murderer. There's nothing as direct and powerfully impactful as the decapitation. Who's the greater criminal, I guess? In the situation, if you decapitated all those people, the person who decapitated all those people for burgers. But they're not like, but this is like an oil spill, right? Like yeah. it's it's a diffuse. It's yeah. It's, it's a secondary pollution kind of issue. Right, and they it's might... a bad. It's not. I'm not saying it's good to pollute. Don't don't get me wrong by saying one is worse. I'm not saying the other is good. But what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at is um. You're making uh you're making a claim about electronics and iPhones, right? Yes, which might not be imported. So I accept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, when you make this claim about uh, say people in uh, low income uh, country, right? Yeah. You're talking about infrastructure and uh, and jobs already being at this at a certain yes. standard, right? Yeah. So you have to first show me how me not purchasing that product would make conditions there better yeah. and that me by me buying that product right i'm somehow draining well-being or making their okay. situation worse yeah. like so i would make an argument actually there's a, there's a very good argument against that that by boycotting these poorer countries mm. you're taking in you're, you're taking away uh okay. whatever finances they're getting and you're forcing them into even worse conditions right no i i see what you're saying i'm just processing it so what you're saying is it's basically less clear what the harm is from buying electronics. And even if we did know, it might just be significantly less than eating meat. So it's not comparable to eating meat because it's like just less clear, basically. But there are some products you do boycott because you've done the research and you're convinced that it's equivalent or close enough above the threshold that is such that you change your lifestyle. Is that correct? I mean, okay, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a fairer reason. characterization of it. Um, it's just, it's, it's unclear what people's accusation is about these products. Is it that there's slavery? Sure. Uh, um, I mean, I guess the, the idea is that it, it seriously harms human well-being, right? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's not slavery, because if no. there is slavery, then that should be dealt with. Like, obviously, the, right. that slavery is a... But then when you when you say it, it's slavery, obviously you're talking about a smaller proportion of these yes. companies. Yeah. So where is that? So then it's less likely that I'm actually supporting slavery. If sure. when, you, when you make it, the more egregious the thing you're talking yes. about, the less likely it right, happens. Which, which is what I was saying earlier when I said, not only is it less clear if there is a harm, but the harm itself is probably less. So, yeah, yeah I mean... Well, let me put it this way. There's a yeah. there's a t-shirt factory in Pakistan, right? And they're making t-shirts and the conditions aren't up to, to the yeah. West's conditions and they get a dollar a day or something like this. But over there, that's the best. People generally work the best job available to them. And like if you if you go out to apply for a job, you're going to look for the best job yeah. available yeah. to you. Now, if you live in, um, say, Pakistan, where, where there's not many jobs available to you, the t-shirt factory is available, that, that is the best uh, job available to them based on their circumstance, yeah? So the, the solution for people would be like, boycott that place, because it's not up to our standard. It's yes. horrible working conditions. And and what that boycott might do is force them into even work worse situation, right. actual slavery it could. Okay, yeah, so in terms of these products which do have like known, what would you, okay, maybe their personal choices. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. So maybe- the, supporting it bad. Yes, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, you're saying there, that, might be a better, uh, there might be a better solution. option, but that doesn't mean that supporting that option is yeah. bad because not supporting that option could force them into a worse scenario if they didn't have yeah. an industry there at all. So what, what products do you boycott, if any? Um, well, let me just put it to you in the animal agriculture case. Like if we were doing what we do to animals for food to human beings- Yes, you would not. It's but very clear that boycotting yeah. that makes the condition better. Right. No, I, this this makes perfect sense yeah. to me, which again is why I'm a vegan. I don't the, like. I think it's so obvious that like supporting the existing agricultural industry is bad. I guess what when I'm looking at like going on a holiday on veganism for three months, what I'd be thinking about maybe is like eating eggs from your own chickens or like your friend's chickens in a farm, which they don't the, the chickens they don't kill, they just raise them like. Is that a moral wrong? Um, it's obviously less than eating a burger. I'm not I would never eat a burger um, in the free months. Probably what I would do realistically in the free months is like occasionally eat dairy products that I knew where the sort they were sourced from. But and was convinced that the conditions were not like as egregious as like murdering or like like 
forcibly impregnating cows. So what, I guess, what are your thoughts on this? Well, so yeah. basically, I see where you're going with this. So so we, we have we fairly tackled your your yeah, just, I, your problem with the distinction between products and we had no, the clarity I, between yes, boycotts I, I, and I'm, I'm, some sometimes boycotts yeah. don't work actually we got this yes. boycott mentality with animal agriculture it's very clear that boycotting if we all boycott it'll animal work. it'll make yeah. better if we all boycott t-shirts they might be forced into slavery yes um, and, I, uh, and yeah. I, I think like for me what's what you persuaded me about is that the it's like compared to meat it's less clear it's less clear it's you and, can be agnostic like right. you have good arguments present the data I might look at it. But, and but, the uh, and also when it comes to say flying, um, I mean I'm I'm still not totally sold on like people flying all the time. Like if someone was yeah, like with, with environmental damage, it's definitely like if I drove around an SUV like yeah, just like loving it, just pumping the music. Like obviously we drive a small car, we get to work, we we do yeah, we do travel I, when we need I to. I find it interesting that as vegans we don't ask people to boycott like unnecessary long haul flights, um, which you know because well, well, veganism was based upon a principle that man should live without exploiting animals. Back then they said man, obviously. Humans yes. should live without violating the rights of sentient animals. That was what veganism was. Yeah, now we have weird. people, a plant-based diet just happens to be really good for the, the climate. Really good for, yeah, there's really yeah. good data on, on whole food plant-based diets for health. Really good epi epidemiology. Yes, sold on okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but that's not veganism. <laughs> that is what has been, th these causes have sure. been co-opted, okay, co-opted sure. the word. But uh, okay, so, so, so really, I'm happy that you're yeah. plant based for plant based for the environment. I'm happy, right? right? For, you've because got, you, you've got your, I see, you've got your own, like, well, not your, you, not my own. I didn't your, find, found this. Yes, yes, so, what I'm saying is, you have a version of veganism or like what you would claim is the, like, the, the founding vegan. version of veganism, yeah. right? But I, I don't know who you'd be to say to like claim the sort of like trademarked version of veganism. But yes, I see what you're saying. It's the oldest, it's the, the one with perhaps like the, because basically, basically, I can violate human and animal rights and it'd be good for the environment. I could I kill mean, you right now. Your carbon footprint is gone. I guess what I'm saying is like, this is... Is that true? Um, I could kill you right now. Your carbon well, footprint is gone. gone. Right, because you have to dispose of the body. Oh, well, well, after I dispose of your body, then you... you carbon negative. <laughs> neutral. Carbon neutral. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm... I'm well, I guess so what, what I'm saying is that, that yeah. sometimes the environmental um, movement can cut against human rights and animal rights because... Yes. Yeah, and, yeah. and the most environmentally destruction, destructive animal on Earth are humans. Yeah, I guess what I'm um. So you see how these these no, no, like, these no, justice no, issues. Yes. Into, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I'm not like. I don't want to get into like a not a semantic debate, but like I don't really care. Like, what is the the veganism? Yeah. But I understand that. Well, I know what you're saying. The difference it's between the environment. Animal, it's the animal rights view versus like I just do it to save the environment are clearly quite different, right? Because oh, yeah. because I can make environmental arguments that are very egregious yeah. to human yeah. rights and animal rights. Not, not saying they're the same, but I think that if someone described themselves as a vegan purely for environmental reasons, I wouldn't be like ha. You're not a vegan. I'd just be like, well, maybe you're just a different kind of vegan or it's a semantic issue. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So uh, would you boycott um, human slavery for the environment? Um, maybe, I guess. As your primary reason. Um, po possibly people do. St I mean, not me personally, but if someone did, I wouldn't be like, look, I don't. This is this is a kind of off track. I, I don't really care about this. Uh, issue. So it's human agriculture, not animal agriculture. Yeah, so look, look I, I'm not. This is. This is not a debate that I really care about. Like what, me neither. We we put the label on. Like I agree that no, they're very. All different. I'm trying to say is how different they are. Like no, I I totally agree they're very different. I just don't care about how we label stuff that yeah. strongly. But anyway, let's go back to the me neither. Previous me neither. But it it does it, it actually does matter a little bit because then people go, uh, I use this word vegan, and then I will uh, I will eat animal yeah. products yada yada under these circumstances. Sure, and that's, yeah, that's a different yeah. Uh, like optics. I guess. So so I guess uh, we're at with you nine months of the year. You're vegan, and when you travel. Uh, you're, you're concerned? Yeah, hypothetically, okay. yes. Uh, so if you were to travel, you go to this country, you eat uh, dairy products and egg products. Well, I wouldn't eat, but I wouldn't eat traveling probably because it's far harder to know where the food comes from when you're traveling. Um, okay, so, so it's not a holiday. It's you're that was in this country? Point. Yes. Okay. That was so you're in point. this country and you're spending three months just letting your hair down and you're eating all the dairy. No, all no, the no, I wouldn't eat just like lots of dairy products. I would eat like occasionally maybe like an omelet depending on where the where the eggs came from like maybe if i knew someone kept chickens for fun and they just like lived their life on their farm and they had like spare eggs i would eat an omelet maybe so one omelet in that three months or i don't know it depends how many eggs there were surplus or whether they were forcing them to, to produce more eggs basically <laughs> yeah so the the hens that actually exist at the moment uh, they've been selectively bred to lay more eggs yeah so i mean i wouldn't uh, i would never like buy them from the supermarket for yeah. example um would you just buy them off your friend or um would you create well, a demand if, for the eggs? If they, were, if they were like, I will produce some more eggs for you if you buy them, then no, right? It's just if they had more about, basically. So if there was a surplus of eggs that were going to go to waste, you would eat them? Yeah. 
Okay. And that would be the only circumstance in which you'd eat animal products? Uh, there are probably other weird, like, exotic circumstances, but I don't want to, like, there's no point in getting on into those. Like, if I was trapped on a desert island and I had to eat, like, a cow or I'd die, yeah. like, why go into those exotic, strange scenarios? But yes, realistically, in scenarios that could actually happen, those are... Those would be the only situations, yes. And, and so in every other situation, why would you boycott animal products? Because you think it's morally wrong to violate animal rights? Yeah. So if you found a circumstance where you could eat animal products that weren't violating animal rights, that would be the only time you would eat them? Um, I, yeah, would that be a holiday from veganism, though? That's the question. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't technically. It would be like kind of a loophole to eat animal products that didn't involve the violation of animal rights. Yeah, I suppose... Because if you, if you walked around and you seen like an egg on the ground that a chicken had left in the forest or something like that and you ate it in an omelette, then why would I be concerned? Yeah, so I guess what you're saying here is that actually that's not a holiday from veganism. That's actually just being a vegan all the time. It's just like basically you, you just a, you're, you're applying, you, you wouldn't be a dietary vegan, but you would be eating animal products in a way that didn't violate animal rights, which would, is what I would be primarily concerned about. But I would still have a secondary concern. Would you like to hear it? I, yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I so, mean, this is a, this is a life choice, lifestyle choice I'm actually considering, so I would like to, yeah. Okay. yeah. The problem for me with it, and it is a pretty serious problem, it's the reason that animal products exist. It's the reason that factory farms, it's not animal products exist, it's the reason that factory farms yes. exist. It's that we view animals as a product and we view the things that come out of them as a resource. And that is how this all began. Okay. Um, so you're going back to the roots of this problem. Um, yes, but I guess what you're saying is by me eating waste eggs, um, somehow I'm going to re-trigger factory farming or contribute to it. No. No. What are you saying? Sorry. I'm saying you're still viewing the animals as a product, as a resource, as uh, things that come out of them as a food source, which is uh, where demand stems from. So you're not actually being uh, revolutionary enough to stop viewing animals like that or animal products like that. So okay. in the future, you, you, still, you still reinforce to yourself, that's a food we need. Uh, or you, Maybe that might leak out into other areas. And if people you know, promoting the idea that animals are food and resources is the problem that we're in now. Um, I, I guess maybe, but like, I would also, con I mean like, I would also consider doing that with certain human products, like. Oh, like so if there, was a, if there was like a bit of human flesh on the ground or something like that, you would eat it? Yeah, potentially, yeah, potentially. And, and what if that led to factory farmed humans or if we had factory farmed humans and we we're really trying to radicalize. That would be a serious problem. And I think if you could convincingly show me the empirical like yeah, example of, of eating like, what, so you find, I can. What, what are they? Yes, that would be. So the, re the factory farms exist, why? Well, no, I mean like, could you give examples of like people today who start out eating like waste eggs and then start factory farming or it leads them to no. becoming more aggressive in their dairy Just consumption. reverse back factory farming to the first time that someone ate it's egg. It's not very empirically convincing though. As Why not? Like, well, it's a slippery slope in action. But the slippery slope is like a known logical fallacy. That's why it's called, it's literally called the slippery slope. Yeah, fallacy. yeah, but, but so it's not really a fallacy, is it? It's just a product of uh, viewing yeah. eggs as resources has led to factory farms. Just reverse it back. I'm not totally convinced though that like individuals eating eggs that are waste products today having being through the process of factory farming and choosing to give it up would then lead again back to factory farming. Like, if I oppose factory farming and occasionally eat eggs that are on the ground, is that is that impossible? Is that is that like? No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It's not an inconceivable thing. I don't think you. I think it's possible. I do think that when you sat down here, you said um, that you're considering not being vegan for three months. So yeah, I think yeah. that that this here is like kind of a gateway to you to maybe just you know saying you know what yeah. I really like these animal products. I'm going to buy a factory farm. I'm going to when I'm in a restaurant if there's yes. eggs in there, I see eggs as food. I'm going to buy that. You know, and, and, I, I, and I am aware. I am aware of this. I think like for me, if the v veganism has quite a lot of like religious connotations because. There's a sort of purism in it, like, we gotta not eat any dairy because making any exceptions is a slippery slope psychologically and it'll lead us back to eating more and more dairy, which I, you know, I... Well, not that it'll lead us back. We are there. It led us to here. Right, but I guess yeah. what I'm saying is, like, we're not... It's not, it's not equivalent. It's not a perfect mirror image because we would have, like, consciously gave it up. But, look, I guess what I'm saying is, like, I understand like why you have to draw bright lines when you're making moral decisions, even if it's not perfectly logical. Because um, what you're saying is it's not wrong to eat eggs that are on the floor in the forest, but what you're saying is it could lead to us doing wrong things. Well, it has led to us <laughs> to this point. And it could theoretically or... Well, it, it reinforces the wrongness of the action of uh, viewing anim uh, v exploiting yeah. animals, basically. So it is, it is more of a philosophical kind of... Like, look at, look at where we are now. Obviously, yeah. when, what do people think eggs are? Food. Yeah, no, and then I guess, but it's not like what you're saying is not actually. 
It's not a violation of animal rights to. to yes. Yeah, it's not it a violation yeah. of animal rights to pick up some roadkill, cook it on the barbecue. Exactly. But if you really like that meat, then why wouldn't you know? Yeah. This is where your ethics yeah. start to bend and fold, and you know we. Right, and this is why what I mean by the kind of religious elements. Like you have to be kind of pure about it, otherwise your mind won't be able to your your soul in a way or your spirit won't be able to make the hard choices that need to be made to protect animals. I guess. It's yeah, well, I'm very, I'm very convinced of animal rights. I'm very yeah. principled, and like I've been vegan ten years, and I don't, I don't lean towards trying animal products in these, these weird scenarios. I know that they're not practicable for everyone to achieve, and I want to be the change I want to see in the world. Yeah. Like, and I don't think it, you can, you can, you can, uh, you can give people no, like no, this no, amount no. of eggs. This is where fact, people want you want eggs, just you. And then what about the next person? What about the next person? Yeah, and I. Uh... <clears throat> Yeah, I, again, like like I said, I am considering this. Um, I'm on the fence. One of the reasons I came here is because I wanted to hear some arguments yeah. against it. Um, you have some good ones, and I think it's 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 fairly it's your 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 case is quite persuasive. Like, I find it very it's very hard to do moral things. Ninety percent, like ten percent, often grows and it becomes impossible. I would say, like, and to just conclude before I go, there, yeah. there is sort of another category of meat eating activities, not well, not meat. I not eat meat in a very long time, but dairy eating activities where I have eaten dairy recently. But I don't necessarily, I don't know. It's like, I feel bad for doing it, but then equally I'm like, I don't know what to say about it. So like, okay. recently, my granddad, who's quite ill, made me a cheese sandwich, and I've not seen, I hadn't seen him in many months. And he was like, here you go, here's a cheese sandwich I made just for you. And I was like, okay, granddad, I'll, I'll eat your cheese sandwich. Um, or like, um, a while back when, you're really, when I was really depressed, I was like, I want a donut. I've not had a donut in a really long time. Again, it's wrong, but like, What's the moral? I mean, obviously it's morally wrong, but like, what's to be gained from morally blaming in the situation? Yeah, it's well, like... Well, well is, uh, it seemed like you begrudgingly took the cheese sandwich or something like this. Like. Well, yeah, but I, I was just, well, obviously, like, insidely, I was like, I don't, I really don't want to eat this cheese sandwich. What if you had a dairy allergy? Dairy allergy? I would have probably eaten it as well. Although he, What if he had anaphylactic shock and went to hospital? <laughs> Um, uh, presumably, I'm saying there's a, there's a line where you'd be like, I'm sorry, I, I can't yeah. take. This. Obviously, like, I wouldn't want to hurt myself for him. That'd be crazy. Like, I'm not, I'm not a nutty dude. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be like. But I'm sorry. There's a. What if there, there were just a, a dog, a dog chopped up in that sandwich? I'm not, I'm not saying it was right. That's not no, what no, I'm no, saying. No, no, I'm just saying like, what are we to do when people say this? Um, yeah, well, like you know, like the, like I think Bernard Williams makes this point where he says morality demands quite a lot from humans, and at some point it can actually cross into the realm of like becoming impossible to live your life or like actually conflicting with other valuable moral things. But this is like a kind of deeper meta-ethical point, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, I get what you're saying. Like, you know, at that point, you know, you had a, was it your grandfather? Or yeah, yeah. A sick grandfather and you didn't want to make them upset at that moment and you took the cheese sandwich yeah, and right. you, you ate the cheese sandwich. Which and I'm not saying is a, I'm not saying it was right morally. Obviously, that's not how morals work. I'm just yeah. saying like there's sometimes morals run out yeah. in how you live your life. Which, not for, yeah. me, not for me, but I can see why, you, you know, you seem like a little bit on the fence anyway. So I wouldn't see you being like, you know what? I don't even eat cheese. I thought you knew. And then let's go get a vegan burger together or something. Because there are ways around those social uh, situations. It's not like, oh my God, there's a gun to my head. I better eat this cheese sandwich, you know. And, uh, yeah, but again, know, again, like so, what I'm saying is like, you can't always expect that from people. Oh, no, no, no. But I mean, I know that. I know what people are yes. like. And I know that's why I don't um, have, that's why I've got this, pro people, when people say, oh, I'm just going to eat these animal products in these scenarios, whether I think that they're going to only use those scenarios that don't violate animal rights. It's a planning, which is more insidious. Whereas like, if they were like this, I, like, yeah. It, I mean, planning ahead is a slippery slope, clearly. If we're like psychologically from experience, like if you're like, here is my like scenario. But if you don't plan ahead and you're like, I've been overwhelmed emotionally or like psychologically, then that, that feels less insidious to me. Cause like there are limits to the human, human soul, I guess, or the human, the human ability to make moral decisions. I feel like uh, being principled helps me a lot. Like I have principles, yeah. you know, and uh, for me, I'm an animal rights activist. I expose what goes on uh, in, in farms and abattoirs and I try to defend the animals and having these principles is what reinforces uh, my decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. And, uh, People know that about me. I'm pretty, you know, people sure. know, yeah, know about it my... It works for you. It works yeah, really it well. It works for me. And, uh, and I think um, people do have these, uh, like, they draw lines, arbitrary lines. It's okay to eat this uh, animal product here because it's that animal I don't really care about. If it was this animal, though, oh, my God, if it was a human being, though, no way. I would just completely... You, you couldn't right. force me to eat it. So I think people draw arbitrary lines when they shouldn't. We share this inherent value... With, of sentience together with animals and we sh we shouldn't really pick and choose yes no i mean i obviously agree with all this yeah yeah, yeah you, i'm you, not disagreeing I'm, you, I'm just saying like 
you're saying there's these outside scenarios where there's uh, they might not necessarily violate animal rights, and you're talking about very fringe kind of. Um... Yeah, but again, the reason I'm a vegan is because I, I think often debating these exotic I call them exotic scenarios because like they don't come up in modern life, and like most people they're not thinking about that when they actually say, "Can I eat meat in this scenario?" What they're thinking about is, "Can I buy eggs in the supermarket?" What about buying a donut? Let's stick there because they're... buying a donut. Why didn't you buy the vegan donut? Because they didn't look. I was I was really depressed. And... Whereabouts? Where Where, whereabouts were you? Because I want to see if there's a vegan donut there. So um, next time, I guess I was in like, this was maybe like five years ago. So I was in Greg's and I wanted a donut. Like oh, five years ago, yeah. <laughs> and you still remember that donut? <laughs> I just remember it because I was like, this is like against what you're used to. And also, I was just like, this is kind of a fairly profound point in my life. I'm like, sometimes you know, like the human spirit just yeah. I I try to live a principled life. I try to live a disciplined life. But you know, sometimes the human spirit, you just kind of can't take it and like, I get it. want a donut and like I get it. yeah it's just not really like a right thing to do but you're in a depressed mindset and you weren't thinking uh as rationally as you maybe are today and you you yeah, feel, and, I, I had a moment of weakness if it had been if i and the only reason it was possible is because eating a donut harms animals in such an indirect way but if it was like going like bludgeon an animal yeah, exactly. to death for this donut obviously <laughs> i wouldn't have I'm not depressed enough to do that <laughs> right but there are people i'm sure there i'm positive there are things that harm people which people also do in the same way, or have done in the past, um, which are equally wrong, but have been done out of like a sense of spiritual failure, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, I think there, there might be a... Because um, it's indirect. I mean, I can't think of like a drone pilot being like, I'm really depressed, I have to hit this button, and like, yeah, but... So, how long have you been vegan for? Uh, three years. But you bought the donut five years ago? Um, no, I've been like kind of been on and off. Uh, so, okay. oh, like, so you're vegan, not vegan, vegan, but not vegan. Yeah, just because it was it was tough, I guess. Okay. Uh, I was like a vegan for three years, and then like there was a year gap, um, and then the, before that, okay. vegan, and then about ten years vegetarian. So, okay. So vegan for, uh, for uh, I know I've had you for a long, long, long time, and I appreciate the chat as well. But uh, for me, veganism is something like a principle that you you kind of hold, and you and, and it's not something that it's not. When you talk about practicing veganism, I suppose it's like uh, eating a vegan diet. You can put on hold and you come back, put on hold. Yeah. But the principle is something that yeah, it's I didn't with feel, you. I didn't it's feel like like it's psychologically quite difficult, um, and you need to find ways of like continuing to do it, especially because the social pressures they can be fairly intense. Yeah. Have you seen what happens to animals in animal agriculture? Have you seen all the footage and oh, stuff? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like I said, no, like I said, like it's this isn't for me a moral dilemma. Okay. I'm not in doubt about whether it's wrong. To, I'm, yeah. What I'm saying is like psychologically, as like a, as a person, like that's what the, that's where the struggle is. And yeah. like what I find difficult with some vegan discourses, I think it it might be counterproductively, um, like critical of people and I think it may underestimate the emotional and psychological attachment people have to meet either in their past in their childhood it like might be a connection with them to yeah. their culture I'm not saying that makes it right I'm just mean like yeah, this is psychologically a highly complicated phenomenon it's ingrained yeah. in society I understand that it's ingrained in psychology it's ingrained in family society. yeah in families and in personal history and identity yeah. yeah yeah and I could only imagine what it was like in like a you know during the you know, four generations of slavery yeah. in America. And it was just, it might've been quite normalized at that point too. Like talking about generations have died and, yeah, you know, way, died. I wouldn't, that's obviously, there's someone out there in history who's like, man, I had such a connection to my grandfather through our slave owning. And it's such yeah. a shame that's a, I, why would we think about that? Economics, you know, and, you know, yeah, uh, you know. But, so, yeah, obviously these things don't trump the rights of humans or animals. So, but I understand there are, there are psychological factors that shouldn't be, underestimated but also yeah. I kind of weigh them up and I ask people to weigh those things up you know because I, yeah. I have mental health issues mental health history and you know I was uneducated I was a, a, a drug addict come out of prison and I had a leg down yeah. and you know um, but I still managed to sort of put the animals plight before all of these factors yeah. and go you know what I always weigh it up that's what I do personally I just yeah. weigh it up well it was great talking to you great. thank you very much yeah. well, I appreciate you. it that was uh, so did, uh, wait a second before you leave did I change your mind on doing your three month uh, eating um, murdered animals yeah it's been it's been very helpful to talk to i think um at most i would eat like waste dairy products i'm still not totally i personally don't think it's gonna slip me into like you really like dairy haven't you found a non-dairy alternative that you like no, no, i do i do eat. you uh, must really like it to eat waste dairy <laughs> i don't like dairy that much yeah <laughs> i guess like there What's are, about dairy that you love so much just 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 like childhood memories of certain dishes you get the vegan ice cream vegan this vegan that vegan vegan everything these days oh my god yeah, but I mean, waste dairy over vegan ice cream. It's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like.
Just really love dairy. Yeah, I, I do really like dairy. What about lab-grown dairy when that comes out? F precision fermentation? Totally, totally. Okay. We'd go for it. Yeah, yeah. All right, brother. It's great talking right. to you. Nice. Take care.